Kenya's appetite for wine has been growing over the years with a strong preference leaning on imported brands. The exploring palates befalling lack on South Africa, which has become a dominant force in Africa's wine economy, growing to be the 10th producer of wine in the world. So how else can we learn the art of winemaking, the new standards of wine production and the varietals of wine in the market if it's not by visiting one of the largest wine producing regions in Africa? NTV's Lilian Kiarie toured the wine lands of Cape Town and explains that the essence of wine is in the production process. The city of Cape Town, located in the southeast of South Africa. Nestled in scenic mountain ranges and valleys, providing ideal microclimates for vineyards. Here, we learn the art of winemaking has three key elements. The selection of the grapefruits, the fermentation into alcohol and the bottling of the final juice. South Africa mainly produces three categories, the red, white and rosés. The quality of wine is majorly determined by the quality of the grapes. Okay, so yeah, you just catch at the top. And the quality of the grapes is mostly determined by the type of soil and its acidity, the weather during the growing season, the time of harvest and the pruning method. When you know the swirls, you'll know the style of the wine, but also then the winemaker can decide which style to produce. We're all about sustaining our vineyards for the next 20 to 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, we also make use of an Italian consultant to help with our pruning, Simonet and Serge, and they help us to, to make sure that the way we prune our vines and um, do the suckering that it's going to be for the rest of the lifetime of this vine, not just to produce quick and a lot of grapes. Others decide to farm naturally, cutting out conventional chemicals. At the Avondale Sky Winery, they have introduced ducks which eat the pests in the farm. A conventional mindset is all about feeding the vine or the crop that you're growing. We look at it a little bit differently. We don't want to really feed the vine. We want to feed the soil and we want to feel, feed the micro life in the soil. So all the earthworms and the bacteria and the beneficial fungi, etc. It is sunny and windy at the same time here at the Western Cape overlooking the Slanghook Mountains. So we've been able to talk to some farmers who are telling us that they've been experiencing drought for the last one year and they have been forced to weed out the plants that are competing for the same water as the vineyards. Grapes can either be harvested mechanically or by hand. Mechanical harvesters are particularly used to cover a large vineyard in a relatively short period of time. First, the grapes are removed from the stems. However, the decision of the stemming depends on which wine is being made. For red wine, the makers use the entire grape from the skin to the juice pulp. While for the white wine, they use just the juice of the white grape. Rosés are made from red grapes where the juice is allowed to stay in contact with the dark skins just long enough to pick up a pinkish color or by blending red wine with white wine. Then comes the crushing. This is the process of gently squeezing the berries and breaking their skins to free their contents. A considerable amount of juice is immediately released. This is called the free run juice and is used to make the highest quality of wine. Primarily, the process of fermentation happens when yeast is added into the grapes or the juice, a process that takes one to two weeks. The yeast will take up the sugar and produce um, carbon dioxide to let your bread rise. 
but in wine yeast the metabolism is a little bit different so the yeast will take the sugar and will convert primary alcohol with secondary carbon dioxide and then in that process he generates heat so that's why the cooling of the tanks is important so we will take the wine in start the fermentation in the cellar downstairs and then if the fermentation is running very good we will put it into the barrel um, and then the, it will run in the barrel another week or two um, you can see with the heads on them there's sometimes some bubbles on them they're still busy with fermentation but they're almost finished after fermentation, the process of cold stabilization occurs where the wine is frozen in iron tanks for approximately two weeks. This is to reduce the tartaric acid in the wine. We try to have a sugar content of about 21 bullings. We also look at the, the pH and the acidity of the grapes and the, 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 the physical um, condition of the vineyard and the grapes itself. The secondary fermentation process occurs over three to six months when the wine is kept under an airlock to protect it from oxidation. This can either be in a stainless steel vessel which has no influence on its final taste or an oak barrel which leaves it with a wooden taste. When you buy a barrel you can say from which forest you would like the barrel to be and which cooper you would have liked it to make that barrel and then the toasting inside as well. American oak uh, complements Shiraz for instance quite a bit because it's got a bit more sweeter flavors where Shiraz as the grape itself have spicy flavors already. Hungarian oak I use on Shannon because it protects the fruit flavors of the wine. As you can see some of them need more water. As the days and weeks go by, the wine moves from a cloudy state to this clear liquid. From time to time, laboratory tests are run on the wine to ensure the correct acidic state. To achieve the desired taste, different blends of wine are combined. And when the right blend is attained, the wine is bottled to preserve unwanted fermentation in the bottle. Kenyans have been consuming wines from South Africa with popular brands in the market. We are about 60% um, of the Kenyan wines that are exported to Kenya. We visit Lavenier Wineries, a boutique winery with vineyards that sit on 35 hectares of land, producing about 300 tons of grapes. The winery focuses on Pinot Church and Chenin Blanc variety and rosés once in a while, a fruity and sweet spice variety. Our visit coincides with the day the winery has just signed a deal to begin exporting in Kenya, buoyed by the demand from ladies. Rosé is really growing very fast in Kenya, especially among the ladies. And um, because Lavonier is a specialist in rosé, um, that's very, very exciting for us. But penetrating the Kenyan market for exporters is quite a cumbersome process. <laughs> One that has seen Kenyan consumers drink the same varieties despite there being a myriad of wines to explode. So it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of um, red tape that you need to jump over um, before you can even get um, someone to export it. Uh, someone to import it there. One of the crucial things that wineries here in Cape Town are keen on is to ensure that they offer a conducive work environment and also operate under a code of conduct. For instance, here at Jason's Hills private cellar, they ensure that no employee works below the age of 15 and also all the employees are under a trade union. It's in a very elegant style, oh, but you can taste it, a lot of flavor. To spice up the experience are some fun activities, such as wine pairing with food, and wine safaris on vineyards stretched out in thousands of hectares. Lillian Kiarie, NTV. <laughs> wow! <laughs>